Okay, we're going to shift gears and talk about heavy metals in baby foods because that is something that has recently come to attention and I've been getting a lot of questions and concerns about that and I just wanted to set the record straight and give people peace of mind. You have probably seen in the news in the last year or so that there's been a lot of discussion about heavy metals and toxic metals in baby foods and it's caused a lot of concern and questions amongst parents. There's been lots of reporting on it and what do we do and I've gotten lots of questions in my inboxes of what do I do with all this baby food I have do I need to throw it away do I need to make my own baby food what's the right answer and so I just wanted to take a few minutes to kind of clear up that concern first and foremost my advice to you would be don't panic because we know that there are heavy metals in foods that we eat on a regular basis and that is entirely normal and for the entirety of human history there's been heavy metals in foods this is nothing new this is no new information um, but it certainly raises concern amongst parents when you see these reports and these things on the news about it and am I doing something that's going to harm my baby remember first and foremost that all foods come from all foods that come from soil have heavy metals and a lot of foods that come from the ocean for example or foods that basically we eat that also eat plants um, have heavy metals in them if you think about salmon or tuna having mercury or um, all of the different things like rice and arsenic all of those foods that we eat come from the earth or they eat things that come from the earth and the earth is full of metals and so I don't mean to sound like a kindergarten teacher as I just said that so I apologize but what we know is that the soil from the earth contains heavy metals when carrots and sweet potatoes and um, all the foods that come from the ground I'm showing my my limitation of agricultural knowledge um, that grow in the ground grow in the ground heavy metals from the ground come up and as part of the soil get incorporated into that food and so what we know is that it's okay that foods have metals in them our bodies from all of human history have been used to seeing metals in foods from from the ancient days till now people are exposed to heavy metals in foods and that is normal now do we need heavy metals in our foods not really we don't use heavy metals in our body for a lot of different processes now there's some that we do like copper and zinc and things like that um, but we don't need things like mercury um, or cadmium or arsenic or anything like that for the normal bodily processes but having said that that doesn't mean that they're inherently bad for us at the right concentrations and so what I try and teach parents is with everything moderation is important and the dose is what makes the poison you can overdose on carrots and have orange skin you can overdose on tuna and have mercury toxicity issues so what we're going to do instead of focusing in on this baby food is reported to have toxic metals in it I can't give it to my baby is we're gonna look and say okay these reports that came out about the toxic metals in food are still below the acceptable levels for heavy metals in foods and so what we know is that it's it's a reporting issue but at the same time the food that we get from the store the food that we get you know the fresh fruits and vegetables that we get also have those things in them and that's something that they watch for on a regular basis and make sure that we're not growing things in soil that has too high of levels of heavy metals but realizing that there is an acceptable amount of heavy metals in food because at the end of the day we all know that there's a risk and a benefit for everything that we eat and so the risk of um, heavy metal poisoning from carrots or from sweet potatoes or from green beans or pears or whatnot is outweighed by the benefit of eating those foods because of the nutrients derived from them from the calories derived from them from eating the, all the benefits that come from eating fresh locally grown foods we know that there is a trade-off there and so like everything in life there's a risk and a reward in this case the reward of eating those foods of being exposed to a lot of different vegetables and fruits and meats and cheeses and all those different things is important and so what we know is that babies can tolerate that adult humans can tolerate that and what we're, what we're going to do instead of focusing on and worrying about the reports about the that there's levels of heavy metals in baby foods is look and say okay we know that the 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 FDA um, and the USDA monitor those and they're the the reports show that they were elevated but not at a level that is considered dangerous we also have a lot of research and experience of all of humans eating these foods to know that there's a safe level in the food and that safe level is um, 
outweighed, the, the, the risk of that is outweighed by the fact that we want our children to be exposed to a lot of different nutrients from different fruits and vegetables. And so we just kind of have to deal with that risk-benefit ratio all the time, realizing that we're not going to do anything that puts our child in harm's way by feeding the, the baby foods that are off the shelf. And, and parents often ask me, well, should I just grow my own food and make my own purees or things like that? Well, if you go to the grocery store and you get some carrots and you take them home and you cook them and puree them and give them to baby, well, those have toxic metals in them as well because those were grown in soil as well. Do organic foods have less heavy metals? No, they have heavy metals in them too because organic foods are grown in soil too. And so they have heavy metals in them too. So at the end of the day, it's like, it's frustrating information to have because it's like, well, I'm giving my baby this. But again, it's just a risk reward thing that we're going to have to deal with. Um, in everything that we do, there's a risk of letting your child ride a bike, but there's also the benefit of exercise and fun and developmental things that come along with those new opportunities. Um, and so we're going to just be balancing risk and war rewards for our whole parenthood and raising of our children and all the decisions that we make um, for our child, for our family, for ourselves. Like driving to work is a risk too, but it's outweighed by the benefit of um, you know taking care of patients and having a paycheck and those sorts of things. So this is just another example of that. And I try and just help parents to to, to not over worry or over um, emphasize the, the, the heavy metals in foods because I know it's something that's been on, on everybody's minds and plates and trying to figure out, well, what do I do? Can I still feed my baby these, these foods? And the answer is yes. You can still feed your baby purees. You can still do making your own baby foods. You can still do baby led weaning because what we know is that the, the levels are low, that our bodies are adapted to, to handle that. And what we want to do is provide a variety. The most important thing that you can do to make sure that you're keeping your baby safe and healthy from toxic metals and things like that is a variety of foods. You don't have to stick with one food for a certain number of days. You can vary it, and variety is the way that we help protect ourselves from any you know, food that might have more heavy metal than another. We can do fruits and vegetables. We can do meats and cheeses. We can do all of those different things that allow us to have variety in our food. And what that does is it protects us. It diversifies the amount of food that we're getting from any certain source so that our body can handle the metals without any long-term damage. Um, it, if we feed our baby the same food every day, every week, every month, every year, um, then the risk increases that that amount of heavy metals will increase. So just doing a variety of foods. Now, I think that for most parents, and when I talk with parents, they, they've been told in the past, you have to do a certain number of foods for three days in a row, because that's what they used to say. And I have done this solid starting solid foods workshop to try and dispel that among all the other myths that are out there about starting solid foods. And this is another example of that. Like you can do three days worth of carrots and you're not going to put your baby at risk for um, any heavy metal poisoning from, from carrots, but you can also throw some variety in there. And I think parents will enjoy it more and kids will enjoy it more if you throw some variety in there. We do carrots one day, we do bananas the next day, we do avocados the next day. Maybe we go finish off some carrots the day after that. That is the spice of life. Variety is the spice of life. And so that's what I try and recommend to, to families to not have to worry that they're overexposing to any given metal or any given food. It's just create variety and create diversity in the food that you eat and where it comes from. And that is as protective as anything. You can eat the foods. You can give your baby fish. You can give your baby fruits, med vegetables, meats, cheeses, all of those things. Provide a variety and you'll be doing everything that you need to to keep your baby safe from heavy metals. So hopefully that has helped to dispel some of the concern that's out there. Now, if there's one thing that you want to do in addition to providing a variety, it would be to skip rice. Rice cereal has been this staple for a long time in the days when there was more concern for iron rich foods and getting those things to babies. But what we know is that rice as it's grown and, and develops pulls in more arsenic. It's not that there's, you know, people putting arsenic into rice cereal to poison babies or anything like that. It's that f there's arsenic in the soil and rice grows in water. And so it soaks up more. I'm, I'm totally showing my lack of knowledge about rice because I could be totally wrong about how it grows. But I know that as rice grows, it takes in more arsenic than the average fruit or vegetable. And it's not at toxic levels or anything like that, but it's one thing that if you want to skip something, if you want to provide variety and skip rice, that will be doing literally everything that you need to do to feel comfortable with introducing these foods and not worrying about the toxic metals. So skip rice cereal, skip rice containing baby foods, and just feed them real normal human 
foods and you will be doing everything that you need to do. Hopefully that helps. If that has helped, you know, comment below because I would love to hear that that has given you some peace of mind. Or if you have lingering questions, comment below as well and we can tackle those. Thanks for watching. Now, before you go, hit subscribe. And if you have a question, text me, 402-256-0768. Keep up the good work.